I've come to understand an irony about being a youth. On the one hand, many of my friends and other youth that I know express indifference and even hopelessness towards the problems of the world and the future they face. On the other hand, adults have great expectations and optimism that youth will be able to arise and become the problem-solving leaders and thinkers of tomorrow. What gives adults the confidence that youth will actually be able to develop these capacities, skills, and mindset to address the complex problems of our world? Where even is this training taking place? My topic today will address how to create spaces that can help release the powers of youth. I'll talk about four key elements that I believe can help youth become self-motivated and work towards the progress of their community. Einstein famously said, we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. We therefore need to change the way we raise up youth so that they can develop capacities greater than those who came before them. So then, what spaces are we currently building to inspire a different level of thinking, and more importantly, a willingness to help among youth? I've come to understand that there's an ideal period of time for this training to begin to take place. For the past year, I've been involved in what's called a junior youth group. This is where older youth aged about 17 guide and empower a group of younger youth aged 11 to 14 into thinking and consulting about meaningful topics, volunteering in their community, and in so doing, developing their character. I meet with my group every week on the top floor of the Fortino supermarket in Oakville, near Toronto. The space was offered for free by the store manager as his way of giving back to the community. So why is the junior youth phase of life so significant? Well, I believe age 11 to 14 is a time of transition from childhood to adolescence. I believe so because I have some recent experience being 11 to 14 myself. <laughs> During this short period of time, our world expands beyond just our family and school lives. And we start to see what's out there. We start to see problems in layers, rather than just in black and white. This is the time when we feel altruistic. We start to wonder what is right and what is wrong. We develop reason. And most importantly, we can form our own opinions as newly independent thinkers. We start to think deeply about who we really want to be, and therefore we are very easily influenced for better or for worse. This is the perfect age to build potential. One 11 year old, after a short period of time participating in a junior youth group, exclaimed he felt he was reaching his true potential. For sure, this was just the beginning, but we all know the power of an idea. Through my experience, I now have a vision of how to accompany and guide youth in their sincere desire to become agents of transformation. So, back to how to designing these empowering spaces. I've observed there are four essential elements to creating such a space. The first element is represented by a roof. Roofs are used to watch over and protect structures. And in this design, the roof is represented by the facilitators of the group. Ideally, it is youth who will act as a guide to their younger counterparts. Now, why youth and not a parent or teacher? Well, in the eyes of junior youth, youth are seen as a role model, a mix between a friend and an authority figure. Just as a roof oversees, the role of these facilitators is to oversee and guide conversations so that the junior youth themselves can discuss and come up with their own conclusions instead of being presented information and being told what's right. Now we have to design a roof. Let's keep designing. The second element of this design is a pillar represented by having meaningful conversations. I'm constantly moved by our hopeful and constructive conversations that we have on topics like striving for excellence, not being overly influenced by others, working for justice, or eliminating prejudice, to name a few. Their profound insights give me hope that one day, youth will be able to think deeply about the world's problems and possess the hope to solve them. These conversations usually don't occur at school on such a deep level. 
and the aspect of consulting with multiple junior youth does not occur at home. While society sees youth as troublemakers sometimes, these conversations tell a different story. Now we've designed a roof in a pillar. Let's keep going. The third element of this design, the second pillar, is the pillar of community service. This is what makes this model come to life, not just through words, but through actions as well. In this age of information, it seems to me that words alone have lost their power to inspire, and it's through actions that we must be defined. One time, when our group was talking about how to help people in need, we decided to go to the local hospital and hand out origami bunnies in uplifting quotes to brighten the day of the patients. We all felt feelings of joy in bringing happiness to others. This was a simple example of how to translate our thoughts into action. Another time when we carried out a toy drive for the less fortunate children. In the beginning, the junior youth were nervous and unsure whether they wanted to approach their neighbors. In the end, they all felt confident and assured in their accomplishment. Unlike high school volunteer hours that are mandatory to graduate and are seen as a chore, this activity reinforced the idea that service comes best from the goodness of their heart. One boy, through these service projects and gatherings, said that he felt a sense of community and belonging. Don't you think that this 14-year-old will not only have the willingness, but also the habit of creating positive change? Our design is now almost complete. The final piece is the foundation. I found through my times in these groups, without a doubt, that this foundation is friendship. True, genuine friendship. Without this friendship, there would be no will to participate or learn, and this design would ultimately fall apart. The stronger the friendship, the stronger the influence. A group like this is so simple to set up and produces a magnificent effect. My motivation to get to my group every week, no matter what, is seeing the junior youth who also show up every week. It's that kind of feeling. Anyone, most especially youth, can set up a group like this. Each of the participants has said that they themselves would like to start a group of, like this when they are older, because they themselves believe in the power of such settings. This means that in about two or three years, my group of 10 participants could grow into uh, like 50 participants, and two or three years after that, those 50 participants could potentially grow into another 250 participants. We'll need many more supermarkets. In fact, that's how I became a facilitator myself. <laughs> Imagine if every family here today consulted on how to establish a similar group like this for the youth in their neighborhood. It would be like a spark that ignites a fire. That is my idea worth spreading.